Start. Before we begin, thank you to EA for sponsoring this video and providing me with a review copy of their game. Wild Hearts, a new entry in the kaiju hunting genre of games. You know the ones. The ones where a giant monster comes bursting out of the background, and all that stands between you and the eternal void is the weapon of your choice. A genre defined by learning movesets, upgrading your equipment from the multiple bodies of your previous prey, and, um, giant contraptions? Hold on, time out, what is this? Carl, I've never seen this before. Do we have the right game? Yeah. You sure? Yeah. Does it have firebombs? Sorta. Well, all right then. In that case, let's start at the beginning, shall we? Wild Hearts is a recently launched title developed by Omega Force, a division of Koei Tecmo, and published by EA. We'll be playing as a nomad hunter, crossing the land of Azuma and hunting monsters as they go. But it doesn't take long before the story takes root, quite literally in some cases. While I initially worried that the narrative would be the generic, hunter shows up, hunter helps village, hunter hits everything until it dies, the story and the setting of Wild Hearts has actually been a welcome change of pace. Set in a fantasy feudal Japan, giant nature-infused monsters have begun to sweep across the region, terrorizing the populace and driving humanity out of the land almost entirely. A single village, Minato, stands on the brink of destruction, with the rest of the Japanese nobles having already discarded it from their minds and abandoned its people to their fate. But due to stumbling upon some ancient technology, you find yourself in the unique situation of being able to defend against the rising tides and, just maybe, turn the tides altogether. While it may seem generic if taken at a swift glance, I do want to emphasize that I was pleasantly surprised when the story began to unfold. Politics between Minato and the mainland exist, the characters all have backstories that will be revealed to you as you grow closer, and the cast of characters you'll encounter all have their own unique personalities and keep the game interesting. In regards to said characters, I was shocked to discover that most, if not all, of the dialogue in this game is voice acted. The actors and actresses all did their jobs well, and helped make the world feel a bit more alive than if they had simply given you the usual oi oi oi, accompanied by text. It probably wasn't necessary, but it was definitely a nice touch. As for our character, character creation is impressive in its scope, and does a great job of letting you personalize your avatar. I was easily able to make the firebomb huntress without too much fidgeting, and could have spent an hour or more adding scars or other aesthetics had I wanted to. Good stuff. No complaints. But it's right about here that I ran into my first issues with the game. Because after I started the game proper, my frame rate tanked. And continued to tank until I turned everything to the lowest possible settings, changed several options in the menus to remove all but the most necessary of aesthetics, and turned down my max FPS to 30. Now, because I was playing on PC, and because PC is tricky to diagnose when it comes to what's actually going wrong, I did a little talking with all of my fellow reviewers. And, much to my surprise, most of them were having similar issues. So I did a little more digging and asked reviewers who were playing the game on Xbox One and PS5 if they were having issues also. And, much to my further surprise, they were. Unlike PC, the console version only lets you change the game into two different modes, performance and quality. And most players were reporting all around frame drops if they weren't in performance mode, and frame drops in multiplayer sessions even when they were. Now, to be fair, the devs have already reported that a day one patch will be coming to the game to help fix the frame rate issues. Which is good news, because if we're gonna hunt monsters, the last thing I want is to try to parry an attack, only to find out I've been dead for a few seconds now. But once I was able to get a steady frame rate, I was able to play the game proper. And let me say, I wish I was able to see it in all its glory, because the game itself? Pretty fun. Let's talk about the biggest part of the game. The monsters. They're neat. All of them are pretty unique from monsters I've hunted in the past, all of them have fun attack patterns that are easy enough to learn, but hard to master. And while none of them felt overly challenging to my veteran hunter hands, they weren't exactly easy either. Learn quickly, and you'll be working your way through the ranks in no time. I also really liked the way the fights evolved over time. Do enough damage to a monster, and it'll start to run. Corner it in its nest, and it'll enter a rage, unleashing the full ferocity of the elements. Cool stuff, and it definitely adds a level of tension to the fights. As to how you'll be fighting, this is where Wild Hearts truly shines. You've got the usual selection of variety weapons, all of them with their own strengths and weaknesses. Katanas give you moderate speed and moderate damage, and are probably best for learning the game, since they don't lean too hard one way or the other with their mobility or attacks. Nodachi have decent mobility, but do great damage, if you time your charge attack correctly. Hammers are slow and unwieldy, but if you time your button presses correctly while attacking and avoid button mashing, you'll find yourself speeding up your attacks and doing more and more damage as you gain momentum. 
The Umbrella allows its user extreme speed and extremely quick attacks, at a lower damage. It's also the only weapon that can parry monster attacks, which means you can keep up the pressure rather than dodging away and regrouping like other weapons. Personally, I couldn't pull off any parries. The window was very tight, and I think my frame rate issues were getting in the way. It, y yeah, that's, that's it, let's go with that. And then there's the bow. Quick, long range, and incredibly easy to dodge with, the bow favors light, low damage attacks. However, the arrows you shoot into your enemies will remain, making monsters into veritable pincushions. And with a quick change of stance, the bow switches into a burst damage machine, with one shot triggering every single other arrow lodged in the monster to create a massive ripple effect of damage. Swap between these two modes, and you'll be able to burst down enemies from afar. These are the five starting weapons, but don't worry, as you progress the game, you'll unlock even more. You've got the Claw Blade, which is lightweight and does medium damage, and is unique in that fights now revolve around attaching to a monster with the claw, and then flowing in and out of melee range. You've got the Karakuri Staff, which I can't quite place as far as mobility and damage are concerned, because it's constantly changing shape and form. Seriously, there's like five different weapons in this thing, and you can swap between them on the fly. This weapon gives off some real Master Tier Hunter vibes. Too good for my blood. And the weapon I grabbed immediately after it was available and never let go, the Hand Cannon. Medium damage with regular shots, slightly stronger damage when you use the launcher attachment. It requires the user to set up pools of energy to keep it firing at a rapid pace, and you need to beware overheating as well. But if you fire a launcher shot when you're just about to overheat, it creates a supercharged pool of energy. A pool of energy that can then supercharge your cannon, which then lets you... <laughs> Did you see that? Shut up and take my money, I want one in every color you got! Oh, and don't forget the armor. Every beastie you take down will give you materials, all of which can be used to craft new armor that gives your hunter skills and abilities. Or you can take those materials and make new weapons, either from scratch or by upgrading your old ones. The weapon paths are extensive, and tend to cross paths with one another. And there's a reason for this, because when you upgrade a weapon, you can actually keep certain traits of previous versions while adding new ones as you continue down the path. So, if you like the rapid fire trait from one tree, but want to take full advantage of the damage increase trait of another, you can. You just have to follow the path and do the math to get there. Now, at this point, you're probably thinking, yeah, that's great and all, but I'm not really seeing anything too different than other games I've played before. But that's because I've left out one key change to the formula up until now. See this little box? This is called a Karakuri, and it does this. Or this. Or this. Or maybe this, or this, or this. And that's just the first few options. This thing is the reason Wild Hearts isn't just another lackluster hunting game. We're not just making weapons and armor, we're making entire worlds with this little thing. Want to make the world easier to navigate on future hunts? Build a zipline. Want to make it easier to locate monsters? Set up an entire infrastructure of watchtowers. Want to make a base camp in a more convenient location for easy fast travel? Set up camp wherever you please. And once you've set up shop, don't forget to personalize it. Meat racks, campfires, smithing stations, training grounds, you name it. Obviously there's limits. You can only have so many of one type of object in the hunting ground at a time. But if you explore the land and unblock the natural elements of the region with resources, you'll be allowed to place more and more objects as time goes on, making hunting your next prey easier and easier. Personally, I really like this. While I'm not really interested in decorating my camps to show off to multiplayer friends and strangers, I am a huge fan of efficiency and this opens up all sorts of ideas. Imagine, if you will, setting up a camp at the highest point of the map. Then, imagine you've got three or four zip lines, all of which go in separate cardinal directions. And then remember that you can jump off said zip lines and use your Karakuri to hover over to your prey. Are you picking up what I'm laying down? Are you seeing the possibilities here? And it's not just hunt setup either. You can also use your Karakuri in combat as well. Give yourself a platform to jump off of and take advantage of aerial attacks. Use walls to block an oncoming charge and simultaneously stun the monster. Use fireworks to shoot a high-flying enemy out of the sky and back into melee range. Set up a hammer to smash your foe senseless so you can set up for the next big charge attack. Light torches to add fire damage to your weapons. Create a triage center to heal yourself or your party. Or just make a bomb. Just, just make a bomb. And there's so much to do with this thing. I mean, look at this skill tree. Look at it! And this is the selling point for me. The game has all the usual staples and does them well. But this thing, this is the game changer. This is how you take a good game and make it great, and how you encourage players to put their own personal flavor on each hunt, which makes multiplayer all the more interesting as well. 
I don't usually play well with others, so I tend to avoid multiplayer sessions. But when it comes to Wild Hearts, I may have to break that trend. The game is cross-play, which means that everyone can buy the game on their preferred console of choice and still play with their friends. And so long as players are at the same point in the story, they can progress their storylines together without having to replay the same missions again in their own worlds. You can play with up to two other hunters, for a maximum of three players in a hunt, and any monsters you encounter will scale their health to match the number of players. But don't worry, monster damage remains the same as single player mode, so you won't be forced into hardcore mode if you want to play the game with friends. And while playing with other hunters was fun, my favorite aspect of joining other players' worlds was the fact that I was able to steal ideas from them, helping me to figure out how to boost the efficiency of my own hunting grounds even further. Or, you know, how not to do things. Why the heck would you put two zip lines right there? There's nothing even over there. So yeah, that's essentially all you need to know about Wild Hearts as far as a surface level glimpse goes. As far as I'm concerned, this game has huge potential. The staples of the genre are all firmly in place, the game feels tight and responsive, and the world, its people, and the creatures that inhabit it are all interesting. But it's not perfect. The hardware issues for consoles and PC definitely need to get ironed out sooner rather than later. And until they are, I find it somewhat difficult to recommend that players pick this up as soon as possible. It sounds like the console versions are safe bets as far as playability goes, and are getting day one patches to fix what little issues they were seeing. So if that's your playstyle of choice, have at it. For those of us in the PC crowd, there should be a patch coming on launch day for us as well. A statement made by the dev team said that they saw significant improvements in performance when they implemented the day one patch on their end, and I can only hope the same will be true for everyone else at home. I want to play this game. I want to challenge on it. I just also want the game to play the way the devs intended. If it can make it to that point, I guarantee this game will take the hunting scene by storm. Now if you'll excuse me, I've got some monsters to hunt. What's next on the list anyway? We, uh, we're gonna need a bigger gun. Hey, thanks for watching. Hopefully you got something out of that review. Whether it was a new interest in the game, a better formed opinion of it, or just a chuckle or two. As always, it's important to remember that this video was based around my own experiences and opinions. If you're interested in the game, I'd recommend checking out other reviews of the game as well. You know, to make sure you're not just getting the Patience Elemental point of view. And if you had any questions about the game, you can leave them in the comments below, and I'll see if I can answer them for you. Big thanks again to EA for sponsoring this video and letting me get some hands-on time with their new game. And until next time, that's all I've got. Take care of yourselves, be good to one another, and I'll see you all again soon.